Last we left off, two of our waifus died. And now we're having class trials for the one of them, Sayaka. And then Junko died because she tried to attack the, attack the headmaster again. You can't do that. Uh, I don't know what we're supposed to do now. Before we start searching for Sayaka's killer, we need to decide what to do about securing the crime scene. What do you mean? Hmm. You're thinking of putting someone on guard duty so nobody can disturb the area, aren't you? After all, if the culprit decides to destroy the evidence, we're pretty much screwed. Hey. In that case, I don't mind doing it. I don't like having to think anyway. I'll let you guys figure out who killed that chick. Hmm. Okay, then we can let Mondo look after the scene. <laughs> Well, no, we can't just leave him there alone. What? What? Why the hell not? Stop talking. Isn't it obvious? If you were the culprit, what's the first thing you would do? By volunteering for guard duty, you're in a position to destroy all the evidence you want. Fine, then I'll stay there on guard duty as well. That way, there's no problem. Mm -hmm. Two-player co-op based defense with the two of them. With their IR stats, they're totally OP. <laughs> Since we won't be able to help investigate, we're putting our faith in the rest of you. What? Uh, I'm still pretty freaked out, but I'll try. Okay, what am I? Oh. I gently placed my hand on Juko's lifeless body. I touched her wrist to check for a pulse, like they do in movies and stuff, but... She really is dead. There wasn't anything else to say. She was gone. Huh? Hold on. Hold on, just wait a second. She's dead? Then that means... Oh my god, what did he just... Did he just realize that? That means everything that's happened so far is real? It's not a joke or whatever? It's really real? Hell no! So someone save me! Let me out of here! Someone help me! What's your problem? You're just now accepting that? <laughs> yeah, what the hell? Oh. <laughs> hmm. So you finally noticed. <laughs> noticed what? I was looking through the Monokuma file we received, and I noticed something very obvious and very unusual. Uh -huh. huh? What are you talking about? <laughs> Go ahead, take a look. Notice anything interesting about where Sayaka died? Oh. My bathroom. She died. She died in ma, ma, ma. Oh my god. Makoto's door. What? She's right. <laughs> then could it be? All at once, everyone's gaze turned to me. H hold on a second. You've got it all wrong. For just one night, I traded rooms with her. I did it because she was afraid. What the heck? You expect us to believe that? Just tell us the truth. The look in everyone's eyes had gone, done a complete 180 from just a few minutes earlier. The feeling of suspicion and fear had returned, in other words. You think I did it? So done. Are we all done talking? We need to begin our investigation soon. At this point, we should split up. We need to get to the bottom of this and find out who killed Sayaka. We'll have to collect clues to form a foundation, foundation then construct an argument to come up to a final decision. If we get this wrong... So... Well, do I really have to say any more? Oh, I'd rather you didn't know. Goodbye. Everyone, pray for good luck. With that, Kyoko hurried, uh, hurried out of the gym. I'll be going too. Uh, and just like that, Kyoko, he was gone before we realized no. it. Oh yeah, I'm on guard duty, huh? I better head to the scene of the crime. Mm. Oh, that's right. Hey, damn it. Let me just say this right now. If, wh if whatever son of a bitch did this is here right now, and they're thinking of destroying that evidence. You're fucking dead. They better not let me find him. Letting his deadly words hang in the air, he and S Sakura ran off. So, um... But, I mean, we're not detectives or anything, you know? And we're gonna investigate a murder? How do you even do something like that? Anyway... We don't r really have to do anything in p particular. We already know who killed Sayaka. What are you, what are you implying? This is very suspicious. It was you. I'm telling you, it wasn't me. <laughs> D don't come any closer! Are you gonna kill me next? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Crazy girl. Well, I guess it wouldn't hurt to give it a shot. It's not for sure that Makoto's guilty yet. Um... That's true. We may as well at least check uh, check just to check. <laughs> Even if it wanted to, I couldn't help investigate. Aww. Wait, why not? <sighs> I'm not good with blood. All it takes is one glimpse and I black out. Oh, yeah? Well, whatever. I don't think anyone was expecting much from you anyway. All right, I guess I better get going. Wait, don't go yet. We have to hear- you have to hear me out. But it was pointless. Everyone had already left, and their parting looks at me had still been filled with suspicion. Does everyone really think I'm the killer? 
How did it turn out like this? Seriously, they got it all wrong. Why do they have to suspect me? I have to do something. Otherwise, everyone will. Execution is... Execution. Execution! Electric chair! Bzz, bzz, poison gas! <laughs> Torn apart like a paper plane in a hurricane! I can't let that happen. I can't let things out... Uh, turn out the way Monokuma wants. All I have to do is find out who really did it. Who really killed Sayaka. Oh, we gonna find out. Investigate! I guess I should look through the Monokuma file we got before. The victim was Sayaka. The time of death is estimated to be around 1.30 a.m. The body was discovered in uh, Makoto's room in the dormitory. All evidence suggests that the death took place in the bathroom. Cause of death was a stab wound to the abdomen. There was also an injury to her right wrist. Specifically, the wrist appears to have suffered a fracture. We have no choice but to push forward if we want to find out what happened. Somehow, I have to find out the truth so that we can all survive. But for Sayaka, I have to find out how she was killed. So I headed to my room where Sayaka's corpse still remained. I better examine the state of my room a little closer. That might reveal something new. All right. There's a key on the ground. It has my name on it, so this must be my room key. If I remember correctly. Oh, that's right. We'll have to trade keys. Duh. We switched keys too. Would have had the key here in the room the entire time. But wait, if that's true, then... How did the killer get into the room in the first place? Did Sayaka have forgotten to lock the door? No, that seems impossible. Hmm. Same goes for you, Sayaka. No matter who it is, don't open the door for anyone. Even if I'm sure it's you, I absolutely won't open it. Otherwise, what's the point of even switching? Something seems fishy. Uh, after saying that, there's no way she would have forgotten to lock it or open it for any reason. Maybe she dropped the key somewhere and someone else grabbed it or something. No, that's not possible either. Saka was in here when we switched rooms. And with how scared she was, she wouldn't have gone walking around, so she couldn't have dropped it. So how did the killer... Hmm. Lint roller! It looks like there's way less than there was before. What? See how dirty my room was? I decided to clean it up a little. Uh, what? Well, I'm investigating. It's like CSI. Uh, there are scratches and gouges on my walls in bed. Hmm. Suspicious. Is that evidence of a struggle? I'd say so. Looks like there must have been some kind of fight in my room. Damn it, I was right there in the other room. If only I'd heard Wait. something. That would not have been possible. Huh. Don't you remember? All the rooms are completely soundproof. So something could happen in the room right next to you. There's no yeah. way you'd know. Perhaps this was another of Monokuma's strategies. Ooh, got more evidence. Uh, the sword used to attack someone, and plus, it's been taken out of its sheath. I hadn't actually looked at the blade itself till now. I shouldn't be surprised it's coated in gold, too. On top of that, some of the gold coating has come off of the parts of the blade and the handle. Yeah, the handle especially is missing a lot of its coating. Remember, the coating sticks to you even if you just touch it a little bit. You gotta check people's hands! Here, but I don't think it's relevant right now. Okay, what about the drawers? Still inside the drawer. Come on. There are gouges in the bed, like someone attacked it. What the hell happened here? Hmm. The replica sword sheath. Does this mean it was used to attack somehow? Swords are taken out. Some scratches on the sheath. They must have been made with something sharp. Hmm. Use a... Uh, okay. Scratches on the sheath. Interesting. By the way... I realized something while I was on guard duty. The killer could have already destroyed some evidence, right? Before anybody found the body, I mean. There's a trash... There's a trash room here in the dorms, right? They could have tossed some stuff in there. Yeah, it's definitely possible. Son of a bitch. The dirty bastard. Ugh, Anyone who raises their hand to a woman is scum that deserves death. That's what my brother taught me. So if I ever find the son of a bitch that did this, I'm gonna pound his goddamn face in. But what if it was a girl that did it? 
Yo. That'll all get sorted out when the time comes. So we gotta go to the garbage room, I'm assuming. Sakura, do you think I'm guilty too? I try not to make assumptions like that. I simply don't know whether or not you did this. Whatever decision the rest of you come up with, I will follow your lead. I see. Hey, Kyoko. I quietly called her name while she was investigating the area, but... What are you doing? Isn't it obvious? N no. Not really. I'm searching. Okay. Searching? She was down on her knees, carefully inspecting every Did inch of my room. In contact or something? <laughs> I don't know what she's doing exactly, but she seems to be concentrating pretty hard on it. But a few seconds later, she suddenly stood up uh, straight Listen. and said, Are you a clean freak? Huh? No, 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 I don't think so, but what? Nodding, she glanced around my room one more time. I see. Interesting. What's interesting? Hey. Just as I suspected, there's something very unusual about your room. Unusual? What do you mean? So... I've searched your floor from one corner to another, and I didn't find one single strand of hair. Really? Indeed. Not one hair from the victim, and not one hair from you, even though you've been living he in here. You know, now that you mention it, I noticed something uh, while I was looking around before. It looked like the limb roller in my room had been used, but I never touched it. Could someone have used it, too? Very interesting. The room didn't have a single hair in it, and someone used your lint roller without your knowledge. In other words, someone other than you came in and scrubbed your room clean. Was it Sayaka or the killer? Well. That's the question, isn't it? The bathroom. <laughs> no, I can't let it get to me. I can't afford to freeze up now. Forcing myself to push my panic down, except for the bathroom. Oh no. Looking at her made it painfully clear it wasn't a dream or an illusion. She had lost everything that made her her. Sayaka. All at once I was overcome with dizziness, nausea, and urge and the urge to burst into tears, but I can't. I can't hesitate now. Why? Why did Sayaka have to die? I have to uncover the truth. I have to find out what happened. I wanted to give up. I wanted to collapse. But that thought held me up and supported me. Oh, great. We get to, in we get to uh, investigate this. The water from the showers gets turned off at nighttime. Sort of sharp object. <laughs> but whatever they used to kill her, where'd they get it? That's definitely something I should look into later. Also, according to the Monokuno file, file, Sayaka's right wrist is broken. Ooh. Her wrist does look swollen and bloody, that's for sure. But there's something sort of glittery there on her wrist, too. Right there, where her wrist is all swollen, there's something glittery. That definitely concerns me. Uh, another thing that concerns me... There's some blood on her left index finger, but that's it. The palms of both her hands are totally spotless, so how come only her left finger? Stomach is what killed her, so when she broke her wrist, that must have happened earlier on. I mean, how would her wrist have broken after she'd already been killed? So it's very possible she broke her wrist during the struggle. The killer attacked Sayaka in the main room, which is when her wrist got broken. After that, the killer cornered her in the bathroom, where they inflicted the deadly wound. Okay, there's writing back there. I looked past Sayaka to the wall behind her, and there I saw... Uh, written in blood were the numbers 11037. Did Sayaka do that? I think that's it. It looks like you found it, right, Makoto? You saw the bloody numbers in the bathroom, right? That's most likely Sayaka's dying message. I've never seen something written in blood before. It really was her final message. It's as if she wrote it with, with right. life itself. Do you often talk like an aspiring poet? But the numbers she wrote, what do they mean? 11037, I have no idea what that could possibly mean. So... The way she wrote the numbers makes me think she wanted to use her body to block them. If she wrote them in that location while she was sitting the way we found her, it means she must have wrote them by turning only her hand toward the wall. If you were to write something in that position, do you know what the result would be? Well... Think about it. You're not gonna tell me? You need to uncover the mystery of the case yourself. So she fractured her wrist by turning her hand, I guess, to try and do it on the back wall. 
and that's why one of her fingers had stuff on it because she was writing it out. It sounds like Kyoko knows what Sayaka's dying message means, but honestly, I have no idea. Oh, I know who I should talk to. When it comes to numbers, who better to ask than the ultimate programmer? Makoto. There's one other thing I wanted to ask you about. Do you know how the door to your bathroom got broken? Broken? Oh, you mean how it gets stuck? What? Gets stuck? Yeah, I guess I'm the only one, but the door doesn't fit in the frame quite right. When I first tried to use it, I thought it was just locked. But once you learn the trick, it opens no problem. Bathroom door frame has been added to the truth belt. Correct. So the door doesn't quite fit the frame, huh? But actually, I'm referring to the broken doorknob. Huh, the doorknob? That's right. You didn't notice? Well, just try closing the bathroom door. I'm sure you'll see right away what I'm talking about. I did what Kyoko said and shut the bathroom door. Huh? The doorknob? What the heck? The doorknob is practically about to fall off. Why is it like this? See? Someone must have used a screwdriver or something similar to unscrew it. Whatever it was, it's obvious this was intentional. What? It was intentional? Why would someone want to do that? So... I guess maybe they were trying to get the door unlocked and ended up breaking the whole thing? But my bathroom doesn't have a lock on it. Only the girl's bathroom can lock, right? She stood there for a while, lost in thought. Then apparently, struck with a sudden realization, she shot a question at me. Just a second. I have just one more question for you. You mentioned earlier that your bathroom door would get stuck, right? Did you tell anyone about that? Uh, oh, um, well, I did tell Sayaka about it last night when we switched rooms. Oh, this is being sketchy. Spent sketchy. So what you're saying is only you and Sayaka knew about it? Mm hmm, interesting. She had the slightest hint of a smirk on her face. I got the sense that she was really starting to get, get into all this. So that clears that up. Oh, what well, clears what up? I'm Goodbye. so lost. Well, see you later. As if forgetting I was ever even there, she suddenly turned and left the room. I still don't really understand any of this, but I've already given my room a good once over. Maybe I should look around somewhere else. I should start looking into where the murder weapon might have come from, and also, I should look into the DVD Sayaka got. What? This is Sayaka's room, right? But the nameplate has my name on it. Nameplates on my room and Sayaka's room were switched. So all that effort I put into switching rooms without everyone, anyone knowing was totally pointless. But why would anyone do that? Hmm. Hmm. Did I get it? Oh, I guess I got it. Okay. I should be able to use this to see what's on the DVD. The DVD that Sayaka threw in the garbage. I sat down in front of the screen and put the DVD into player. Push play and the screen was dark for a few seconds, but then... An image slowly appeared. It looked like some kind of concert. Aw, oh, she looks so pretty! And standing on stage, front and center, was a face I recognized all too well. Sayaka. She was there along with the friends she said had been so important to her. She was positively glowing there in front of the crowd, so full of life. Seeing that image made it even harder to accept. Except that she was dead. My vision started to blur and darken, and then that voice I'd come to despise so much began to float out of the speakers. Izono, the ultimate pop sensation, lead singer for a world-famous all-girl pop band. For these girls, the glowing spotlight only made them that much more beautiful. But then... Uh-oh. Sayaka had disappeared from the stage, which was now in ruins. But what I noticed even more than that was the figures of the other girls who had all simply collapsed. Uh-oh. This ultra-successful team suddenly fell apart. None of them will ever perform on stage again. None of them will ever feel the warmth of the spotlight. For Sayaka, there's simply nowhere for her to return to. So here's the billion dollar question. What, oh what, could have caused the group to go to pieces?
Without warning, the video cut off. What the hell? That wasn't real, right? They're a super famous pop group. Everyone knows who they are. Is he trying to say he was even able to get to them? If that really did happen, everyone in the outside world must be going crazy. What kind of person would take things this far? Trash. There's a sturdy gate here, no way to get past. Oh god. It's the end of the line! The trash room. This is where all the trash in the school eventually it winds up. How do you get this gate open? No, no, you can't go any further. No entry beyond this point. Only the person on cleaning duty is allowed in. Cleaning no, duty? No, you can't go any further. No entry beyond this point. Only the person on cleaning duty is allowed in. Who's on cleaning no, duty? No, you can't Shh. go any This is stupid. It'd be faster to just go around and ask the no, others. No, you can't go any further. Shh. Cleaning duty has been added to the truth bolts. Gotta go to the dining hall. You know, are you investigating the dining hall? Hmm. Oh no, I'm just taking a break. Actually, I've been taking a break since we started. This is all a first for me, you know? I don't have the first clue what I should be doing. I know what you mean. <laughs> and I don't know why, but being in the dining hall helps me calm, be calm. It's because the food. Food helps me calm down too. So I know I shouldn't, but I've just been kind of hanging around here. Uh, to tell the truth, I was doing the same thing last night when Sokka was killed. Wait, you were hanging out in the dining hall? <gasps> Found where the knife was! There are all kinds of kitchen knives here, big to small, but it looks like one of them is missing. Was it missing from the very beginning, or I'd better see if anyone else knows more about it. Hey, so did you notice one of the kitchen knives is missing from the dining yeah, hall? Totally. Yeah, weird, huh? I thought it was kind of strange, a knife just suddenly disappearing like that. Oh, so it wasn't missing from the That's beginning? Right. Nope. Last I remember, they were all lined up in a nice, neat row. So when did you notice one of them disappeared? Well, well I went to go get some tea from the kitchen last night, and all the knives were still there. But when I finished my tea, I went back into the kitchen to wash my glass. One of the knives was gone. So you're saying the knife disappeared while you were drinking your tea in the dining hall? Yeah. In other words, you were right there in the dining hall when someone came and took it. Then you should be able to say for sure. You can tell everyone I didn't come to the dining hall last night. Which proves I didn't take it. Uh, cool. Um... Hey, by the way, did you really kill Sayaka? <laughs> what? Of course not! I would never! Hina, are you really- or Hina, do you really think I murdered her? I mean... Well, she was killed in, her, in your room, right? So, I mean, you guys were supposed to be friends, right? But you still killed her. On the other hand, two people becoming good friends, then one killing the other is a classic drama setup. So when you consider everything together, I honestly have no idea. Can you tell me anything about cleaning duty? No. Ignorance. You're like a child lost in the woods, you know that? A totally waste of space. What do you mean? <laughs> Taka's the one who has any interest in organizing things like that. Oh, good point. Oh, thank you! I did not know where to go. I am like a child. I got to find Taka. Cleaning duty, eh? As a matter of fact, uh, Monokuma came and talked to me yesterday morning. Really? Listen to me! He probably realized I was basically in charge, so he decided to talk to me directly. The topic of conversation was assigning cleaning duty. Oh, so you're on cleaning duty now. That's wrong. Actually, no. Huh? Okay, then who is? <laughs> Haifumi was also there when we had the conversation. He volunteered right away, so I let him have it. So he's on cleaning duty Tell then? Indeed, but we'll swap out on a weekly basis. I'm sure he'll be up before too long. When that time comes, I'll be counting on you. Fumi. Um, I'm looking for whoever's on cleaning duty. Cleaning duty? As a matter of fact, that's me. Why would you ask? It just so happens Monokuma talked to me yesterday and asked me to take care of it. Without someone on cleaning duty, the school would be flooded with trash in no time. So I firmly applied for the position. I was going to start this morning, but after what happened, I haven't had a chance to get started. And since you're on cleaning duty, you can open the gate in front of the trash room? Of course! It's my job to gather up all the garbage and toss it in the trash room. And to do that, they gave me the key for the trash room mm -hmm. gate. But we're supposed to rotate once a week, so eventually you'll be in charge. Very strange. Wait, hold on. You need a key to get in the trash room and only the person on cleaning duty has access to the key? What's the point of going to all that trouble? Why not just leave the trash room open all the time so we can throw things out whenever we want? That does seem more convenient. So in other words, 
Actually, anyone who kills a fellow student and becomes black and will graduate unless they are discovered. So that's it. That must be why. If anyone could go in and out of the trash room whenever they wanted, then destroying evidence would be easy. The thrill would disappear and things would become boring. Boring? Hey, listen. Anyway, uh, more important than that. Hey, you bastard. Hey, fatty. Why do you want the cleaning duty gig anyway? Oh. Um. Uh, I just decided to volunteer for something I knew no one else would want to do. What's the big deal? You. The... Liar. I know what you, why Is you it did it. Like... You want to dig through all the girls' trash looking for, you know, and poking around at it. There's no way to think about this. What are you talking about? All my love is for D2. You know what I mean. Uh, but there's all kinds of trash diggers like that. Maybe you'll get tired of D2 and then turn to... I would never get tired of D2. After spending a significant amount of time comparing D2, 2D to 3D, I voluntarily chose 2D. The only thing 3D is good for is to shower love and affection on 2D. Oh, and PVC figures. How are you not totally embarrassed to say stuff like that? If you're so worried about Hayfumi's questionable morality, there's a very easy solution. Whenever a guy is cleaning duty, Sakura can accompany them from picking up the trash uh, to disposing of it. What? what? If you're an innocent, as you claim, where's the harm in it? It's not how it's supposed to... Anyway, on another topic, uh, Haifumi, since you were on cleaning duty, I have a favor to ask you. Mm -hmm. What, so now you suddenly want to join my party? Sorry, but you haven't triggered that flag yet. I mean, you haven't helped me recover from a past trauma or save a village or beat a boss. So Hifumi and I headed down to the trash room. Mm -hmm. You'd like me to open the gate, wouldn't you? <laughs> you know, when I look at it, it makes me think. They say he killed his wife. He learned how to get by on the inside, but he never stopped dreaming. Get busy living or get busy dying, he said. So him and Rita, they found themselves a way out. Whatever, please just hurry up. <laughs> Okie dokie, leave it to me. Pulled out a key from his pocket and used it to flip the switch next to the gate. And then... Mr. Naegi. However, Mr. Naegi, doubt. surely you aren't planning to use the trash room to destroy evidence, are you? You fiend, you planned this all along. No. I just wanted to see if the actual killer had tried to destroy any evidence or not. Mm. But the actual killer mm. is you, isn't it? Mm. You want to see if you left anything behind. Oh. Wait, maybe a parallel world? Whatever. Or whatever, let's just hurry and keep looking. This is the incinerator. It's way in the back part of the trash room. It's a good 30 feet from here to the gate. Ah, it's on right now. Mm -hmm. Do you see the green and yellow buttons next to the mouth of the incinerator? Yes, indeed. It's a pretty simple setup. You press the green button to get it going and the yellow button to turn it off. Sooner or later, you'll be on cleaning duty, so make sure you learn this before you leave, okay? Huh, someone turned the incinerator on? Very strange. I'm quite certain it was off last I was down here. Perhaps it was the work of a fairy. Uh, <laughs> Hifumi, do you realize what you just said? Huh? The fairy? No, you said that last time you were here, the incinerator was off. Uh, yes, about that. There could be no mis mistake. If I've gotten one thing going for me, it's my memory. I feel as if... Yesterday, as soon as I was appointed, I came down to check the place out. It definitely wasn't on then. I haven't been back to the trash room since then. And since I'm the only one who has the key to open the Most gate, suspicious. it should be impossible for the incinerator to be on. And yet, because that means someone was able to switch on the incinerator without opening the gate. But how is that possible? Yeah, somebody threw something at it. There are shards of broken glass scattered around in front of the ex incinerator. It looks like it used to be some kind of glass ball, just about big enough to fit in the palm of your hand. Is that... Do you know what this is? Mm -hmm. They say if you collect all seven, a dragon will appear and grant you a single wish. Mm. Hmm, kidding aside, it's the kind of thing you might see on a, any big city street corner. Gaze into it, and it will show you a glimpse of the future. Just like that, meet a girl who was on that quest to find that one guy. Yeah, I get what you're trying to say, but who did this particular ball belong to? There's only one person it could be. They should all still be in the gym. I better go find out for sure. There's something on the ground in front of the incinerator. Looks like a burnt piece of something. 
Mm. I burn peace like a hunk, like a hunk of burning love. Anyway, this is, it looks like a piece of cloth in the shape. It's part of the sleeve from a button-up shirt. And now that I look at it, there's definitely blood on the cuff, which means this is all that's left of some of the evidence that the killer destroyed. But there are lots of people here with white button-up shirts. This isn't enough by itself to figure out who the killer is. This whole thing is quite strange indeed. When I was here last, the incinerator was off, and those glass shards and burnt clothes weren't. What does it all mean? Mr. Nagy, will you be confessing soon? Why me? Everyone already knows you did it. All the mysteries are being solved one by one. Sounds like he's living out one of his comic book fantasies. Hey, Chihiro, I was hoping I could ask you something. Oh, what is it? Before she died, Sayaka left a message. She wrote out the number 11037. Oh, because she's the programmer, I forgot. Do you have any idea what these numbers might be in? Like, could they be a code or something? Mm -hmm. Sorry, no. Chiro slowly shook her head. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry, I just don't know. Okay, well, don't worry about it. Thanks anyway for trying. Even she doesn't know. Or could she maybe know more than she's letting on? No, it couldn't be. Hey, Hero, can I ask you something? Uh... I gotta get out of here. Hero, snap out of it. Uh, Makoto, what are you doing here? Hey, uh, does this look familiar? Ah! That's my crystal ball! But it's all smashed, what the hell? What the heck? I only bought it because the guy said I was it was blessed. He said it was unbreakable. So how did it break? Was it actually just made of glass and not crystal? Did that guy totally do me? He said it belonged to the Pillars of History. He said whoever controlled that crystal ball controlled the world. Is that seriously all BS? Uh, let's put that aside for now. So you can say without a doubt that this belonged to you? Um, yeah, that's mine for sure. I probably forgot it in the laundry room last night. Someone must have come by and snatched it. You left it in the laundry room? That means anyone could have found it and taken it. Thanks, Hero. That's all I wanted to know. Uh, by the way, I'm almost afraid to ask, but how much did you pay for that thing? Uh, Everything I saved up from fortune telling for two full years. Came out to be like a million. Oh my god. A million? Um, That's pretty cheap, actually. I mean, considering it gives you the power to control the world. It's just too stupid. I can't even feel bad for him. Um, so, uh, I'm getting tired of waiting. What say we just get started, hmm? It's uh -oh. time for the long awaited okay. class trial! Now then, allow me to appoint a proper location for the proceedings. Please go through the red door on the first floor of the school. <laughs> oh. The red door on the first floor? That's where I should go. No, where I have to go. Ooh, I'm ready! <laughs> Oh. You're late, Makoto. We've all been waiting for you. <laughs> I bet you were afraid you were just discovered as the murderer Listen you are. I'm so excited. I want to know what class trials are like. Let's not jump to conclusions just let yet. Save that for the class trial. There, we can all reveal the details of Makoto's crime. Uh, so they really are convinced I did it, but... I didn't do it. Me and Sayaka both know that all too well. But then, who is the killer? Oh, I gotta figure it out. The one who murdered Sayaka. Is it really one of us? <laughs> Is everyone here? Okay then, please board the elevator in front of you, which will transport you to the courtroom, where all your fates will be decided. <laughs> I'll meet you all down there. I'll be waiting. Well then. Let us begin. Yes, indeed. Go in the elevator. Everybody go. Are you scared? No, scared isn't quite right. I said it before, but it's up to you to uncover the myster mystery surrounding the case yourself. If you don't, you'll never come to grips with the truth. What? I need to uncover the truth of Sayaka's death. I didn't need someone else to tell me to do that. I swear I'll find out who the real killer is as I raise my voice to try and give myself courage. I turn, trembling with anticipation, toward the elevator. With each step forward, I can feel my heart 
faster, faster. Okay, yeah, let's just go. Let's just go. No need to explain it in detail. Steelbox descended with heavy clunking sounds towards the school's basement. I wonder if this is how a death row inmate feels when his time Ooh. finally comes. Rather than that, is it not more like a defendant waiting to receive his judgment? Oblivious to our shared anxiety, the elevator lowered us further and further into the bowels of the school. <laughs> you finally arrived! What do you think? Does it feel just like a real courtroom? It's like a Hollywood movie set, right? Not even close, it's total shit. Okay, okay, everyone find your assigned seats and sit down. Hurry up now, hurry up! We did what he said and found our seats. The seats were arranged in a giant circle. It was set up so that everyone could see everyone else. Which also meant it'd be easy for anyone to transfer their tension and unease into anyone else. The air seemed to grow heavy as we sat there. Oh. And so the curtain on our first case opened. They keep on our first case? Does that mean there's more than one? I thought we're all dead after this. Well, oh, unless we pick the right person, then we're not all dead. A deadly judgment, a deadly deception, a deadly betrayal. A deadly riddle, a deadly defense, a deadly fate, a deadly class trial. Do I actually get to like try to Let's bring down the person? With a basic explanation of the class trial. So your votes will determine the results. If you can figure out who done it, then only they will receive punishment. But if you pick the wrong one, then I'll punish everyone besides the blackened, and the one that deceived everyone else will graduate. And the killer really is one of us, right? Okay, man. everyone, close your eyes. And whoever did it, raise your hand. Don't be a goddamn idiot. Why the hell would they raise their hand? Before we move on and start the trial, can I ask a question real quick? Kyoko's gonna figure it out. I like Kyoko, What's actually. What's going on with those pictures? I feel awful if they got left out just because they died. <laughs> Friendship penetrates even death's barrier. Friendship penetrates? Oh my god. Okay, but what about that other empty seat? There were only 15 of us to begin with, so why are there 16 seats? Oh, no reason. It's just that our little courtroom here can technically fit up to 16 people. Okay, that about does it for the preamble. What? Get ready to get started. First up is the case summary. Now, let the class trial begin. It's about to begin. The bit, debate to decide who we think the killer is. Anything I found, anything I noticed, I have to be ready to speak up about everything. Because this isn't just about me, everyone's lives are on the line. The first non-stop debate is about to begin. Would you like to hear more? No, I'm good! <laughs> Life or death, I got this! It's fine. I'm prepared. Make your argument! I assert that the one who was murdered was Miss Sayaka Maizono. Yeah, we know that part already. And the murder took place in Lakota's room. Ooh, what am I supposed to? What am I supposed to shoot? So it seems most likely that the killer must have taken her by surprise while she was in the bathroom. No! Even have a chance to resist. Let's talk about what was just said. Maybe if Sayaka hadn't resisted at all, there's no explanation for what happened to, to my room. She didn't even have a chance to resist. There we go. No! No! <laughs> gotcha! Just a second, Chihiro. Try to remember how my room looked. I think we can definitely assume there was a struggle. A struggle? Between who and who? Between Sayaka and the killer. I'm so happy they're talking so I can have a break. <laughs> I would think I would enjoy this game like way more if everything was spoken dialogue. So you're saying 
Sayaka wasn't caught by surprise in the bathroom? She must have been attacked in the main room first. Then, she ran to the bathroom to try and hide. The killer followed her in, and that... That much should have been obvious after taking one look at the scene. It shouldn't even need explaining. Sorry. Okay, so what's next? Next is the subject of the murder weapon. Wow, this is starting to sound like a real trial. We already know that. I like this, uh, the <laughs> style of this, though. So what was used to kill her? There was some kind of sharp object thrust into her stomach. Without a doubt, that is the murder weapon. So the killer used some random knife they had on him. God. No, it's wrong. No. I'm almost positive it was a kitchen knife. Huh? A kitchen knife? After the murder, we discovered that one of the knives from the kitchen was missing. Which means that knife must be the murder weapon. Oh, yeah. I guess that makes sense. You could sort of see the weapon sticking out of her stomach. <laughs> and if you look real close, you I could, could sort of see that being a kitchen knife. Okay, so the murder weapon was a kitchen knife. But where does that get us? I mean, we all know Makoto killed her, right? That's right. Makoto's room was the scene of the crime. What more proof do you need? I'll trust her. She hasn't she hasn't been helping or talking oh, much at all second. this entire thing. I'm... She just keeps blaming me. Let's draw our conclusions after we've presented our arguments. Otherwise, what's the point of the trial? Well, we can talk all we want. It's not gonna change that conclusion. I don't think that's true at all. I'm sure if we keep at it, something new will reveal itself. You really believe that? She's right. There's gotta be a breakthrough somewhere, just waiting for us to find it. Because I know damn well I'm not the killer. Cool. I mean, I'm assuming this is a little easier because it's the first one, but... So I guess there's no question that the kitchen knife was the murder weapon. But where does that get us? I mean, Makoto must have taken it from the kitchen, right? And did it in secret. And nobody was in the... No, that's wrong. No, bitch! Somebody was in the dining hall. I'm telling you, it's her. She keeps trying to blame me. Hold on. I didn't take the knife from the kitchen. Next, you're gonna say you're not the killer, right? Go ahead and say it all you, you want. It's this damn to Toko. Well, She's doing what it. What if I have a witness? What do you think, Hina? Huh? Remember what you were telling me earlier? I went to go get some tea from the kitchen last night, and the knives were there, and then when I finished my tea, blah, blah, blah. Are you drinking your tea in the dining hall? Yeah. Just to be perfectly clear, the knife disappeared while you were in the dining hall, correct? Y yeah, that's right. And at any point while you were there, did you ever see me come into the dining hall? Um, no, I don't think so. You don't think so? No, he definitely wasn't there. The knife disappeared while Hina was in the dining hall. But I wasn't there the entire time. In other words, there's no way I could have taken the knife. Okay, then what about this? What if the idiot swimmer girl and Makoto are in on it together and lying to protect each other? This girl, what? Idiot swimmer girl. Wow. Oh, and more importantly, why would I get involved in something like that? Speaking of which, I'd like to ask the bear: if there is an accomplice, do they also become blackened? So you ask, and so I shall answer. Each murder is allowed to have an accomplice, but only the one who does the killing will get to graduate. So, in other words, two people can work together, but one of them has no chance of profiting from it. Then there's no way anyone would work together, right? But what if they did work together, and they just didn't know about the rule? Ugh, good grief! Enough already! No, okay? There are no accomplices in this case! Oops, did I say that out loud? 
Anyway, I didn't go to the dining hall, and I didn't take the knife, so I'm not the killer. Okay, so then, who did take the knife? Tina seemed the obvious candidate. After all, she just said she was in the dining hall. What? Why are you so quiet? Because they are, um, the characters are reading, so I don't have to. Like, the voice actors and actresses are actually talking. I don't so, like reading. What? I don't like reading. No, no way. I swear I wasn't- I said I'm enjoying them reading everything, finally. <laughs> sure, but can you- It's because we're in the trial right now. That? Reading is my least favorite form of- we're in a class trial right now to decide who the murderer was. I'm trying to figure it out. Did you say me? Yeah. No. That's right. I don't know yet. <laughs> We're having a trial. We're trying to figure it out. You. Uh, I hate to have to ask, but just to be sure, Sakura's me. Right. But then, couldn't either one of them have grabbed the knife? Actually, no. Because. Um, well... Just spit it out already. I stayed in Hina's room last night. What? <laughs> what? I got so scared thanks to those creepy videos. I wasn't really thinking. I just asked her to stay over. Which means we have airtight alibis. You stayed over? Doesn't that violate one of the school regulations? We're not allowed to sleep anywhere but the dorms. But it doesn't say we have to stay in our assigned room, so I don't think that's a problem. It is a problem! A boy and a girl spending the night together? It's... it's unwholesome! She's a girl! I'm a girl. <laughs> you are? Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry! But if it wasn't either of you, then what other possibility is there? Actually, there is one other possibility. Right, Hina? Oh, yeah, that's true. One other person did come to the dining hall while we were there. Was it Toko? Why didn't you say so in the first place? Well, because they're not here anymore. Someone who's not here, are you talking Sanka. about? She's the one who came to the dining hall. And then later, she wound up dead. Wait. Okay, so the person who took the knife from the kitchen was... I'm gonna say Sayaka. I got it! Then, Sayaka is the one who took the knife? That's the only possibility. And thinking back on it, she was acting kind of unusual. When she came into the dining she hall, kill herself? she didn't even look at us. She just went straight to the kitchen. As she left, she said she just wanted a drink of water. But most likely, and the person who took the knife was the victim herself. Hmm. I'm sure. I'm sure she just took it for self defense. So you're saying the knife she took was then taken from her and she was killed with it? In that case, you may not have taken the knife, but you still could have killed her. What? See? He did do it after all. Look at her! Look at her face! <laughs> She's evil, I'm telling you! You're wrong. So, that's how you would twist the argument and send us all off in the wrong direction? Hmm. You possess a most terrifying talent. Damn, if I don't do something, they're gonna blame me for the murder. Don't they understand? If they convict me, they're gonna die. It's still too early to decide conclusively that Makoto is the killer. I think Kyoko said, knows. Kyoko knows what went down. Because you see, can you please if just? The room did belong to the killer. Then they did something most bewildering. What? <laughs> Kyoko, can you just tell us who did it? I mean, we're all in this together. You're gonna die and too if it's wrong. Unravel that little mystery. You simply can't declare that he's the killer. Bewildering? What the hell are you talking about? Something was missing from the scene of the crime that by all rights should have been there. You know what I'm talking about, don't you? Something that should have been at the scene but wasn't. That must be the crucial point. I don't know! We could just figure out what that something is. Kyoko knows what it is though! Why is she not telling me? Wait, what? I'm so confused. Oh, hair! 
I did do A though. I'm so confused. Now I understand. That's right. There wasn't a single hair on the floor. I did it. So everybody with the face popping. <laughs> evidence? Yes. And if I were the culprit, why would I need to get rid of all the hair in my own room? It wouldn't be unusual at all to find my hair at the crime scene if the crime scene is in my room. The reason all the hair was gone was to remove any trace that Sayaka had ever been there. That makes sense, does it not? No. If that were the case, they would have had to do something about the body itself, not just her hair. Yes, very true, very true. Okay, then why wasn't there any hair on the ground? The killer got rid of it all, of course, to remove any trace that they had ever been there. Wait, then that means... Precisely. It's simply beyond reason to believe that the room's owner and the killer are one and the same. Then, Makoto isn't the culprit? Are you sure we can decide something so important based solely on the absence of some hair? No. There are other reasons that prove why Makoto couldn't have done it. I would like to hear these reasons. Do you remember anything remarkable about the bathroom at the scene? Sayaka was attacked in the main room first, then fled into the bathroom, right? Yeah, then they ran after her, got into the bathroom, and stabbed her. And how did the killer get into the bathroom? Did they have any trouble with it? What do you mean? It's fairly certain that the killer had some trouble getting into the bathroom. There was clear evidence left behind. Do you remember, Makoto? The killer struggles getting in the bathroom. The evidence that proves it is the object the killer broke. Yeah, the doorknob. Evidence that the killer had trouble getting into the bathroom. You're talking about the doorknob, right? Huh? The doorknob? What doorknob? The doorknob for my bathroom. It was completely broken. See how the top part was unscrewed? And the doorknob's about ready to fall off? Oh, yeah, true. But what does it mean? In trying to bypass the lock, they ended up nearly removing the entire doorknob. This is another most bewildering act for the room's owner. It proves Makoto is beyond suspicion. So what? You're saying he wouldn't break the door in his own room? But if the only choice you have is to break it, you break it. There's nothing bewildering about it. You still don't see? Okay, then. Let's take another look at how the incident unfolded. Hopefully that will help you understand. Kyoko said it was a bewildering act. I almost didn't notice it at first, but... Is that the key point here? Oh no, I'm scared! I'm scared! I'm too, <laughs> I'm too stressed out! The incident took place in Makoto's room. Saika was first attacked in the main room. She then fled into the bathroom. Then the killer ran after her. And they got into the bathroom. At that point, the killer had to try and bust down the door because Sayaka had locked it. No, it's wrong. You're wrong! My room doesn't get locked. The reason my bathroom didn't open wasn't because it was locked. After all, the girls' rooms are the only- Yes, now that you mention it, that is true. Then why didn't your bathroom door open? Because it was stuck. Huh? What are you talking about? My bathroom door doesn't fit in the frame quite right. Monokuma over there can testify to that. Yep, true as true can be. But you know, you're supposed to be the ultimate lucky student, right? But to have such a cruddy door... <laughs> that's not lucky at all! So the reason the door didn't open was just because it was stuck. But the killer didn't know that and assumed it was locked. So they tore apart the doorknob to get in. Okay, but then why would the killer even think the door was locked in the first place? Everyone should have known you can't lock any of the boys' bathrooms. The killer could easily make that mistake, thanks to one important detail about the scene of the crime. The killer was convinced the bathroom door was locked. They didn't know that the door actually couldn't be locked. 
In other words, the important detail about the crime, see the crime that they didn't know was the crime took place in my room. Wait. In other words, the important detail about the scene of the crime that they didn't know was the crime took place in my room. I got it. The killer must not have realized that it was my room. What? Are you saying the culprit didn't even know where he was? That's inconceivable. And yet, he's absolutely right. Say what? Well, to be more specific, what the killer didn't know was that Makoto and Sayaka had switched rooms, which is what led to the misunderstanding about the bathroom. If Sayaka had been in her own room, then... Then there would have been a lock on the door, and they would have had to break through! So they had no idea how unnecessary their actions were. Ultimately, we can't know if it came open by force or simply by accident. But... The killer must have been considerably confused, with no idea how they actually got the door open. Regardless, it was a pointless act. Wasting time trying to break down a door that wasn't locked is... Definitely something I wouldn't do, since I would have known exactly why it wasn't opening, right? That is a definite possibility. So the killer would have to be someone who didn't know they'd switched rooms? Then Makoto couldn't have done it. That's what I've been trying to tell you. Then who did do it? I'm sorry, but I give up. Quit without saving. But... What happens if we can't decide on who we think did it? Well, why don't we just vote right now? Majority rules! Majority rules? You really think that's a good idea? Yeah, our necks are on the line here. Someone seriously needs to do something. For serious. Does no one have any other thoughts or questions? It does not matter how trivial they may seem. Oh, as a matter of fact, I do have one question. Oh, you... You don't gotta sound so disappointed. It's fine, it's fine. Just ask your question. Oh, yeah. Okay, so, um, well, I was just wondering, how did the culprit get into Makoto's room in the first place? Hmm, yes. How did the killer get inside? Maybe Sayaka just dropped the key somewhere and the culprit picked it up. That's possible, right? I don't think so. That seems way too convenient. Then... maybe someone picked the lock? Negative! If you remember, Monokuma made it quite clear that the locks are all unpickable. <laughs> Fine. How about this? The killer got in the easy way. They could have knocked and said they wanted to talk or something, and Miss Maizono just... let him in. No, that can't be it either. Oh, -ho! trying to argue against me? Sounds like someone doesn't know his place. Hello? Why exactly can't that be it? Because she asked me to do something in particular because of how frightened she was. That's the answer right there. There's no way Sayaka let someone in because... I got it! Because Sayaka was already scared, remember? Yeah. That's why she asked me to switch rooms in the first place. Knowing what she'd been through, I just can't believe she would have opened the door for anyone. What if her being scared was a lie? What? Huh? What? Well, what the hell is that supposed to mean? Why would she lie about something like that? I know you don't want to consider it, but look at this and tell me. Can you still deny the possibility? There's something I want to talk to you about, just us two, in five minutes. Come see me in my room. Wait. Come see me in my room, check the nameplates to make sure you don't get the wrong room, okay? I what? found a notepad during my search, and I shaded in the top sheet with a pencil. And these are the words that appear. Oh man! I've totally seen people do that on detective shows. What? When you write, it can leave an imprint. Sketch over the next sheet of paper. Walmart <laughs> court friends and votes. Like, what? When I saw that, I what? was like, holy crap. I better make sure I rip the paper out before I use it from now on. It's a pretty old-fashioned technique. But even the classics can be surprisingly useful sometimes. I'm guessing we never found out what she's the ultimate of, or like superior of. Maybe she's the ultimate investigator? I don't know. Oh, and I should also mention, 
I found the notepad on the desk in Makoto's room. Huh? Which means only someone who had been in Makoto's room before the incident could have written it. Who was in my room before I'm the sure incident? It was Makoto who lived there, or Sayaka who switched rooms for a single night. So, Makoto, did you write this? Oh. Uh, no. no, I didn't. But of course you didn't. Because the note also bears a perfectly legible signature. Sayaka's signature. Make sure you don't get the wrong room, okay? Oh, so she switched the nameplates so that they would know which room she was in. And that note, Sayaka wrote it? But why? why? Why would she write that? The note was likely her way of getting in touch with a certain someone. She must have slid it under their door to let them know she wanted to meet with them in secret. If you got an invitation like that from the ultimate pop sensation, what young man could resist? Of course, I'm only into 2D, so it wouldn't have any effect on me. But can we be sure anyone even got this note? And honestly, even if they did, I do not think they are at all involved in what happened. Huh? What makes you say that? <laughs> Would you like to hear what I have to say? Very well then. Pay attention. Hmm. Sayaka and Makoto switched rooms, correct? But in the note, the place they were asked to come to, it specifically says, my room. I see. So if someone read that note, then they would have gone to Sayaka's room. Exactly. The room that Makoto was staying in. So in other words, even if someone did read the note and did what it said, they would not have any connection to what happened. No. It certainly would seem that way. So my room instead of sack is the reason for that is... Exactly. The room that Makoto was staying in. No, it's wrong! Hopefully that was it. The nameplates on my and Sayaka's rooms got switched. They got switched? That's right. The nameplates got switched, just like the rooms themselves. As a result, the nameplate on Sayaka's room actually had Makoto's name. And the nameplate on Makoto's room had Sayaka's. So what you're saying is, the room Sayaka was staying in was actually marked as her room. Then, if someone did do what the note said, they would end up at Makoto's room where Sayaka was. Plus, their rooms are right next to each other, so switching the nameplates would be no problem. And the one who switched the names was... Well, of course it wasn't you, right, Makoto? Right? Okay, then who did it? I'm so confused. Sayaka. I got it! Me and Sayaka were the only ones who ever knew about us switching rooms. So the only other person besides me who would even know to switch the nameplates was Sayaka. You can also infer as much from her notes. Hmm. Check the nameplates to make sure. She specifically oh. tells the reader to check the nameplate. She would only have written that if she knew the nameplates had been switched. But why would she switch them in the first place? She wanted someone to come to the room she was in, and also hide the fact that it was Makoto's room. What? Inviting someone to your room, but not telling them you'd switched rooms. Why would anyone do that? To understand that, hmm. we first need to understand what happened after she invited the person into the room. That's where the answer lies. What happened then was probably... Whoever she invited over came in and attacked her. We figured it out. We know who did it. Whoever she invited over is the culprit. But we still don't know who it is, you goddamn idiot. Sayaka fought with her killer there in the room, yes? Perhaps the answer to our previous question lies in that initial struggle. Yes, I think you're right. Then... We just have to figure out what happened during the fight, right? That reminds me. There was a replica sword at the murder scene. Was that perhaps used during the fight? Oh, yeah. 
What's the deal with that sword? Sayaka suggested I should hold on to it. I thought it might come in handy if I had to defend myself. It seems pretty likely that the killer used it to break Sayaka's right wrist. But how the hell could you possibly know that's what broke her wrist? Oh, there was a... There was that gold thing. The glittery. Glittery injury. All you have to do is take a good look at her broken wrist, and it should become pretty clear. Right there where her wrist is all swollen. There's something glittery there. See? Is, is that gold? It sure is. Specifically, the gold coating from the replica sword. You barely have to touch that stuff, and it'll stick right to you. And there's some on her wrist because... I got her! Because she got hit with the sword right there on her wrist! I see, I see. And so the truth draws ever closer. All right, then it's about time to solve this mystery. What happened in my room? It led to Sayaka's death. That's what we need to make clear. When the fighting broke out, the culprit grabbed the sword. And that's when the first blow was dealt. A sword-based sneak attack. And that's what broke Miss Maizono's wrist. So she tried to fight back. She grabbed the kitchen knife she had hidden away. But then the culprit took that from her too. And they killed her with it. Hmm. And that's exactly what happened. Sword-based sneak attack. No, that's wrong. I don't know if that's correct. I don't know. Actually, no. I don't think the fight started with the sword. Because the sword sheath had been scratched. See? There's a gash in it. Something sharp. You mean like the kitchen knife? That was the only sharp thing found at the scene. Stop jumping ahead. Slow down and explain it so I get what the hell's going on. If the sword was used first, there wouldn't be any explanation for the scratch on the sheath. If you are going to attack with the sword, you'd take it out of the sheath first, right? That's true. With the sheath on, it'd be heavy and bulky and useless as shit. Okay, so how did the sheath get damaged? If they got attacked with the kitchen knife, maybe they grabbed the sword as a defensive impulse. In that situation, there wouldn't be any time to actually unsheath the sword. So you're saying the sword was initially used to defend against an attack from the knife? Which means whoever had the kitchen knife was the one who attacked first. I think I get it. So here's how it all played out. The culprit came in, found the kitchen knife hidden there somewhere, then they took the knife and attacked Sayaka before she knew what was happening. So she grabbed the sword to defend herself. But then the culprit took that from her too. Then, after they broke her wrist with the sword, they took the knife and finished it. Sorry, but I don't think Sayaka used the sword to defend herself. What? How the hell can you not think that? Because she never held the sword at all. There's a certain part of her body that makes this clear. Everybody would have to touch it. I got it! You're talking about her palms, right? The palms of her hands were perfectly clean. So I don't think she ever picked up the sword. How can you know that just by looking at her palms? Like I said before, the gold coating on that sword comes right off. Oh! I think she invited somebody to her room to try and kill the other person. And then the other person figured it out as she went to attack her. And then killed her! If you look, you'll know it's safe to assume I, that's because... That's my theory the as of now. There's really no way she could have picked it up and come away completely clean. Maybe she washed her hands after she escaped into the bathroom. Sorry, but I don't think so. Why do you say that? Is it because you think I'm ugly? Oh my god, it's her, isn't it? It's her, isn't it? No, that's not it at all. It's her, isn't it? 
It's gotta be her. She's the only weirdo. Not the only weirdo, but the being the weirdest. So I haven't washed the gold coating off her hands because there's a certain regulation that talks about. Oh, the, the water was off. I got it. According to the Monokuma file, Sayaka's time of death was around 1.30 a.m. In other words, at nighttime. And the water in the bathroom shuts off at nighttime, right? Oh, I didn't know that. Actually, I haven't taken a shower. Gross, girl. Oh, my. You're no different. You smell like a big, fat, ugly donkey. Hmm? I'm not sure whether to take that as an insult or a compliment. Insult, obviously. So anyway, if Sayaka never touched the sword, then that means the killer is the only one who used the sword. But hold on. If that's right, then the one who damaged the sheet with the kitchen knife was... Sayaka? I got it! Sayaka? She had the kitchen knife? But we already we said figured that the attack started with... The person with the knife attacked first, and the sword was used as an impromptu defense. Oh, Sayaka! I got you, girl! Yeah, she tried to kill- she tried to get somebody to come to her room and kill them. The one who attacked first was... Sayaka? Now do you understand? She wasn't a blameless victim in this. No, far from it. It's almost as if she'd been planning to commit a murder of her own. She took the knife from the kitchen, then invited the culprit to the room she was staying in. And if it's true that she had the kitchen knife and attacked without provocation... Indeed. These are all the actions of an assailant. Which brings up another point. Makoto, Sayaka was the one who suggested you two switch rooms, correct? Ooh, she was gonna try and kill somebody and frame Maybe it on me! Oh, what a bitch! ...was so that she could pin the crime <gasps> on you. That is a possibility, is it not? I wanted her to be my waifu. To on me? Ah, oh, my waifu, that no. Also explain why she no. The name plates. She wanted to get whoever she had targeted to come to Makoto's room where she was staying. And by committing the murder there, instead of her room, that would implicate Makoto. But for that to work, the target had to be lured out while still keeping the room swap a secret. If the target knew she had switched rooms, they would have become suspicious right away. So all that's why she switched the names? But doesn't that plan seem a little risky? For one thing, even if her plan worked, Mr. Naegi would just tell everyone they'd switched rooms. I don't know. I'm not sure our soft-hearted Makoto is capable of that kind of cutthroat behavior. I'm sure Sayaka realized the same thing, which is why out of all of us, she asked him to switch rooms. Ah, oh, she played me. Plus, she played she me! The ultimate pop sensation. A totally forgettable kid. Or a national superstar. Who are you more likely to believe? Wait, then you're saying she had this all planned out? Holy shit! But in the end, her plan backfired. She launched her attack with the knife, then found herself under attack in turn. That must be when her wrist got broken, and she was forced to drop the knife. The tables were suddenly turned on her, and she died at the hands of the one she'd planned to murder. Just hold on! That can't be true! Because... because... Hey! Hey! You guys have totally derailed the argument! You're being super boring right now! Come on, hurry up and decide who did it! Wouldn't it be awful if I had to punish you all just because you ran out of time? Oh no, who is it? Oh yeah, we gotta decide who we think did it. Makoto, right now you just need to concentrate on figuring out the answer to this mystery. If we can't uncover who murdered Sayaka, it's over for all of us. Why is it on me? <laughs> Obviously, I'm committed to finding out who killed her, but what can I do? I mean, as far as clues go, there's nothing left. Great. Oh, the message, the numbers. The numbers. It's easy just to say, hey, decide who did it. But there just aren't any more clues, right? I think that Very was it. Well. Then let's review all the clues we found up to this point one more time. 
Do we really have time for all that? But there just aren't any more clues, right? No, that's wrong. One more clue. One. There still might be one clue left. Sayaka's dying message. Dining? Wait, wh what did you say? The dying message. She wrote something on the wall behind her, remember? One, one, zero, three, seven. Written in her own blood. There must be a clue about the killer hidden in there. Well, before we get too far into that, I need to ask, can we really be sure that Sayaka is the one who wrote it? It's a question that Sayaka wrote that message, I can prove it. Oh yeah! The finger. I got it! Her left index finger had blood on it. That could only be because she used that... I see. She broke her right wrist during the fight, so she'd have to use her left hand to write. Sure. I think we can all agree Sayaka wrote it. But still, what the heck do those numbers mean? Hey, Chihiro. You're a computer nerd or whatever, right? You should know all about numbers and shit. N no, that's not... Yes, I'm a programmer, but I don't see any kind of meaning in these numbers. Of course. It's because they're not numbers. Oh, yeah, it looks like... Huh? What? What? No, it's just... Uh, look at the numbers, assuming they're not numbers. Don't these first two, one one, look less like two numbers and more like one letter? Leon. Ah, oh, you're right. <gasps> the connecting line is barely there, so I assumed it was one one. But uh, 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 looking at it now, you could also read it as an N. Who oh, is the red-haired guy? Whoa, you might have finally just said something worth a shit. <laughs> Little gray cells are really getting excited now. But even if that really is an N, N037, doesn't make any more sense than before. It's Leon. Oh my god. Rotate the image 180 degrees. Yeah, come on, guys. Come on. Think a little bit. Maybe I see something. Oh my god. Now I see. She wrote down the killer's name. Huh? You just shot past the clue part and right onto who did it. Yeah. So, whose name did she write? It's Leon. Select someone. It's Leon! Oh, I got you! I got you! I knew your name was Leon! At first I was like, is his name Leon? Here's my answer. The key to solving this mystery was simply to rotate the writing 180 degrees. Nya nya nya, Leon. If you turn the message around, it becomes the letters L-E-O-N. L-E-O-N. Or more accurately, Leon. He was the other one that was trying to say it was me. He was the only one that was trying to say it was me. It was him and that the weird girl next to him. What are you talking about? It, it's just a coincidence. It's just a bunch of random squiggles that happen to look like my name. No, it's not random at all. She wrote that message on the wall behind her as she was leaning up against it. In that position, she couldn't move to write normally and had to write upside down, as it were. And as a result, when you look at it standing in front of her, it ends up getting flipped. Try it for yourself if you want. Write something sitting like her, and the letters will be inverted. Th that sounds like one hell of a stretch to me. I'm the killer? You can't just go and say shit like that. If you're not oh. the killer, then why did you try to destroy the evidence? Huh? You know what I'm talking about, right, Makoto? The evidence Leon tried to get rid of? I'm trying to get rid of. I think I fell on the ground in front of the incinerator, right? Yeah, the... I got it. Oh, we taking him down! The burnt shirt piece I found laying on the ground by the incinerator. We right? taking them down. They must have gotten some of her blood on them. 
And to dispose of the shirt covered in the victim's blood, they threw it into the incinerator. But one piece burned off and got left behind. And the killer didn't notice. If they had, they most certainly would have panicked. Isn't that right, Leon? What is one scrap of fabric enough to conclude that Leon is guilty? Yeah, I mean, Leon's not the only one wearing a white button-up. That, that's right! There are plenty of other people here with shirts like mine. With just that one little charred piece, there's no way you can say for sure who it belongs to. You're right. That alone isn't enough. But there are some other points that may reveal the truth. Are you finally starting to understand? The answers to all the riddles are right here. Yeah, I think so. Something about... Closely at how the shirt was disposed of, we should be able to figure out who the killer is. Oh, oh yeah, that's a good point. I, I think I know what you're gonna say. You can't reach the incinerator without opening the gate in front of the trash room, right? And obviously, you wouldn't be able to hit the switch to turn it on either. You need the key to get in, and the one with the key was the person on cleaning duty. So the killer had to be whoever was in charge of taking care of the trash, right? <laughs> Interesting. No, that's wrong. There was another way to use the incinerator without being the one on cleaning duty. That's exactly what proves that Leon is the real killer. The key to the trash room. Whoever was on cleaning duty must have had it, right? So the only one who could get to the incinerator was the person in charge of the trash? And you'd have to get close to the incinerator in order to destroy the evidence. Nah. You don't have to get close. No, 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 no. Hold on. No, 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 I Leon. think I know how someone could dispose of the evidence without using the trash room key. But if you can't get past the gate... You couldn't possibly turn on the incinerator, could you? Yes, you could. If you used this. What is it, some kind of glass ball? It's busted to hell. Actually, it was supposed to be a crystal ball, but, uh... But how would you use it? The killer had to use the glass ball in a certain way, which was... Throw it? Divine with it? <laughs> throw it. The killer simply took aim at the incinerator switch and threw the ball through a gap in the gate. All they had to do was hit that switch, and the incinerator would come to life. Someone threw that... threw a gap in the gate? Remember what you said before, Hifumi? Perhaps it was the work of a fairy. Hifumi had the key. So the only way the incinerator could have been turned on without his knowledge was because the killer was able to hit the switch without opening the gate. Once they got the incinerator going, all they had to do was ball up the shirt and toss it in. Hey, come on! What the hell is this? All you have to do is look at the scene to know that the killer never actually went inside the trash room. The shards of broken glass, the incinerator left running, the piece of shirt that escaped the fire. If the killer had been on cleaning duty, the evidence would have been taken care of much more thoroughly. Wait, wait, no, just hold on. But the distance from the gate to the incinerator has to be at least 30 feet, right? <gasps> oh, he's a baseball. The accuracy you'd need to throw a glass ball <laughs> that far and hit the He's a baseball ball. player, a professional Did baseball player. Do that? That's right! There's no way! It'd be impossible! Difficult, absolutely. Impossible? I don't think so. Because the killer is... I got it! Because the killer is the ultimate baseball star! Isn't that right, Leon? You Leon! Do you have any idea how stupid you sound right now? A target 30 feet away would surely be little challenge for the ultimate baseball star. You, you, you can't 
be serious. I, I'm not the killer. These goddamn shipper brains have got it all wrong, I'm telling you. You still won't admit it? Okay, then. Makoto, go ahead and review the incident one more time to make his crime perfectly clear. And with that, we can end this. Listen to me! What the hell do you mean, end this? Say what you want, Leon. But all the questions have been answered. And the truth has been revealed. Now here's what happened. Closing argument is about to begin. Ooh, I like it. Okay. She dropped the knife. Here's exactly what happened. <gasps> Whoops! I think I'd better take one more look back at the case from the beginning. I accidentally pressed the right mouse button, but hopefully maybe it was right. Last night, the killer went to the room Sayaka was in. In other words, my room. From what we can tell, Sayaka invited that person there intending to kill them. But then something happened that she wasn't prepared for. They grabbed the fake sword I put in my room and fought back. During the struggle, a strike from the sword broke Sayaka's right Why wrist. Oh, whoops, I got that one wrong. Whoops, so I guess it was this one? The killer is you! During the struggle, a strike from the sword broke Sayaka's right wrist. And that's when she lost her grip on the kitchen knife. Finding herself cornered, Sayaka panicked and ran into the bathroom. The killer went after her, but couldn't get the bathroom. What they didn't know was that my bathroom door got stuck easily. Sayaka knew about that because I told her. But of course, the killer had no way of knowing. So instead, the killer forced the door open, took... ...and stabbed Sayaka. But with what strength she had remaining, Sayaka left a dying message. To keep the killer from noticing, she wrote it on the wall behind her. that, all her strength was gone. With Sayaka dead, the killer quickly began destroying the evidence. First, they took off their shirt, which was... Then they took the lint roller in my room and cleaned up the entire area. They wanted to make sure they got rid of any trace they'd ever been there. Afterwards, the killer headed to the trash room to destroy their bloody shirt. They tried to burn the shirt using the incinerator there, but the trash room was blocked off by an especially sturdy gate, preventing access to the incinerator. So they came up with a plan to use Hero's crystal ball, which he left in the laundry room. The killer managed to throw the ball through the gap in the gate and hit the incinerator switch. For any normal person, that'd be an impossible throw. And that's because the killer was the ultimate baseball star. The crystal ball, thrown with absolute precision, hit the switch on the incinerator, which then quickly roared to life. destroyed the final piece of evidence they left the area with I imagine a sigh of relief but there was one thing they missed part of the shirt they'd thrown into the fire burnt away and fell out of the incinerator the killer didn't notice this and so left behind a piece of indisputable evidence Leon. 
It would appear that Hero simply forgot his crystal ball in the laundry room. You went there to try and wash the blood out of your shirt. And that's where you saw it, right? Seeing the ball? You thought of a way to take care of everything. So, Leon, do you object to anything that's been said? Do I object? Hell yes, I object! Of course I do! I object, I object, I object! I mean, all of this is just a bunch of stupid theories! You need evidence! Where's the evidence? Without evidence, it's all bullshit! We just gave you all of our evidence! I refuse to acknowledge it! Well then, I guess this is as good a time as any to present the evidence that proves you did it. Makoto, I believe you're in possession of that evidence. I have the evidence? The killer removed the screws from the hmm. doorknob. They didn't use anything from your room to do it. Instead, they must have used something that belonged to them. I refuse to acknowledge you! You're stupid! Stupid, stupid, stupid! Stupid, 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 stupid! Where's your proof? You kidding me? Not a chance! It wasn't me! Stupid! You lie! Stop talking! Shut up! Where's your proof? I'm so confused! Not I guess I'm getting destroyed? I don't... <laughs> I'm so confused! If I have to replay the whole thing over, we're doing it another time. Is is this really the end for all? Oh, give it another shot. Yeah. I refuse to give up yet. Yeah, I'm so confused how to play this little game. Lie. Stop talking. Shut up. Where's your proof? Oh my God, did I do it? Where's your proof? This should prove it. Ugh! This is so... <laughs> I'm so glad I finished it. Jesus. The screws on the bathroom doorknob were removed. I wonder what kind of tool the killer used to remove them. I mean, it had to be a screw... Oh, yeah. I'm pretty sure the toolkits we got each had one inside. And that must be what he used. There aren't any other tools anywhere. But the toolkit in my room had clearly never been used. That's because the culprit didn't know it was your room. They thought they were in Sayaka's room. Only the boys got two kids, so the killer naturally assumed there wouldn't be one in there. Okay, then whose toolkit did the killer use? Stupid, stupid, stupid! It had to be their very own toolkit. Stupid, 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 stupid! Leon, would you mind showing us your toolkit? The screwdriver will show some evidence of being used. Stupid, stupid, stupid! Huh? And if you say you used it for something else, you'll have to explain exactly when, where, and why. And let me say this right now. I lost it isn't an excuse at this point. Stupid. Stupid. This is weird. So, you have no rebuttal? Then it would seem we are finished here. I got a C at the end. All right. I'll take it. <laughs> Looks like you've reached your verdict. Then are we ready to cast our votes? You all have a lever in front of you. Use it to make your selection. Oh, just to remind you all, make triple sure you vote for someone. You wouldn't want to be punished for something so minor, right? Okay, then let's get excited! Who will be chosen as the Blackened? Will you make the right choice? Or the dreadfully wrong one? What's it gonna be? What's it gonna be?
Hi, hey, bud. Hey, puppies. <laughs> uh oh, looks like you got it right on the money. The blackened in this case, the one that killed Sayaka, was none other than Leon. Oh my god, no way. <laughs> Hold on a second, Leon. Leon, did you really kill Sayaka? I don't believe it. You son of a bitch. What the hell's wrong with you? I, I didn't have a choice. It was kill or be killed. So that's why I killed her first. One wrong step and you'd be the one standing here. It was complete chance that I wound up like this. Just <laughs> unlucky. That's all. <laughs> Come on! You expect me to just accept my death? Everything's become clear. The decision we made was right after all. But when I think about that, honestly, I'd be better off if we'd been wrong. Because if we... If what we came up with really is the truth, then that truth is that Sayaka was trying to frame me. But even if that's true, I can't say she was wrong. After all, the mastermind... It's all because of that video. Even I couldn't handle what I saw there. If I was her and the video actually had something to do with me, I can't even imagine. Now we're trapped here with no way out. They're probably waiting for me. What? I can't afford to be what? stuck in here. The one thing that was more important to her than anything else, her dreams, her friends. Uh, to have to see something like that happen to them. And Sayaka. I did whatever it took to reach that dream. I mean it. Even some things that weren't so ple pre yeah, pleasant. And that's why Sayaka, for the friends that meant so much to her, that's why she betrayed me. So when she said, No matter what happens, please always be there for me. I need you on my side. She was lying to me from the very beginning. She was using me. Is that why she talked to me in the first place? I guess I'll never know. Because there's nothing I can do to ask her what she was thinking. Once you're dead, that's it. <laughs> Boy, howdy, the entertainment industry must sure be terrifying, huh? I mean, to try and kill someone just because of those relationships. Ba -bum, ba -bum. She seems so nice and lovely on the outside, but inside, she descended into pure madness. Well, what did you say? Phew. I understand. Really, I do. Yep, yep. You're in utter despair thanks to Sayaka's betrayal, right? Compassion, intimacy, love. The stronger those feelings, the stronger the despair when they collapse. Stop screwing with us. This is all your fault. Sayaka being forced to do something like that. All of it. Everything. It's all your fault. Suddenly, in a frenzy, I lunged at Monokuma. Uh-oh. But... That's enough. That's enough. As angry as I was, Kyoko latched onto my arm without hesitation. Her grip was like iron, strong enough to be... Strong enough, I was sure it would leave a bruise. Calm down. If you really want to make her enemies pay for what she what they've done, you need to let it go for now. Damn it. Ba -bum, ba -bum. Uh, that was that was a close one. I thought for sure you were gonna give me a good walloping. <laughs> Just barely avoided punishment, you did. Yes, indeed. Now then, since you so magnificently revealed the identity of the killer during the class trial, the blackened Leon will receive his punishment. Pun punishment? Uh oh. You mean Execution? Wait a second! I didn't have a choice, I had to kill her! Yeah, that's it. I was just protecting myself in the heat of the moment, it was self-defense. How exactly was it self-defense? Mm. When you forced your way into the bathroom, did did you or did you not use your very own toolkit? After she shut herself in the bathroom, you went out of your way to head back back to your own room. Then you came all the way back, broke into the bathroom, and killed her. Am I wrong? You, understand? you had any number of chances to stop what you were doing, but you chose not to. Is it not because you had an unclouded intent to commit murder? So, that's why... No, that's not... Stop it! I've had enough of this. Oh. oh, are you sure? You were closer to her than anyone, were you not? He killed your precious Siaka. Do you understand? I can't say, Le I can't say Leon is solely to blame. Of course, I don't plan on blaming Sayaka either, because... Because the one to blame is him! Huh? Swa? 
If it weren't for you, this never would have happened to Sayaka or Leon. We shouldn't be fighting each other. We should be fighting against the one who put us in this situation, the mastermind. Uh-oh, did you awaken your sense of justice? Hey, um... Well, it just so happens that there's nothing more unethical than an unwavering sense of justice. After all, it's people with that sort of mentality that perpetuate war all over the world. Hmm. Is that the kind of justice that's awakened within you? Just shut up. Hmm. Okay, well, anyway, more importantly... Let, kills, kills. Let's hurry up and get to what everyone's been waiting for, the punishment. I'm begging you. Please, don't do this. Hey. No more begging. No more excuses. You must pay the penalty for breaking the rules. Society demands it. Stop, please. Now then, I've prepared a very special punishment. For Leon, the ultimate baseball star. No, no, no. Uh-oh. There's an animation! Silver Kiri, thank you for subscribing to the Twitch Prime! Game over, Leon has been found- oh. Uh-oh. I'm scared. This can't be good. Uh oh. Damn. It's a dark game. <laughs> dark game. Everybody's faces. What we saw, that was the true face of despair. I mean, if we can't call it that, what else could we call it? Extreme! Man, my adrenaline is pumping right out of control! Do you really have to keep doing this? I just can't take it. Well, well, hey, if you don't like it, <laughs> all you gotta do is swear to cut all ties with the outside world and accept living here forever. That's only if every single one of you can get on board with that. <laughs> of course, we can't cut free of the outside world being trapped in this insane place. Hmm, hmm you're trapped, are you? Well, I'm sure once you learn all the mysteries of the school, your thinking will change for sure. You'll think, boy, isn't it so wonderful how we all get to live here forever? What does this mean? What are you trying to say? Okay. I feel like there's some deeper meaning hidden in there. Just like before. Anyway, let's get to the blackened punishment. That's what everyone is waiting for, after all. Hey. When you say everyone, who exactly are you referring to? <laughs> Sorry, I said everything I've got to say. I need to save some of the fun for later. And just like that, he was gone. He left us there overwhelmed by a nightmare turned reality. Even after he was gone, we stood there forever, unable to move. Actually, no, it wasn't that long, I think. Everyone just lost their sense of time. We were all too scared. Scared of being alone. <laughs> No one even tried to speak. Their faces were stone, their voices dead. But it was in that moment. Just a second. Makoto, can I talk to you for a second? 
She moved in close and whispered in my Makoto. ear. Before we head back, there's something I want to talk to you about. It's about Sayaka, isn't it? I'm surprised you figured it out. Listen. I told you before the class trial started. You had to figure out the mystery of this case yourself. You wanted me to realize how Sayaka betrayed me by myself, didn't you? The thought never even crossed my mind to feel like such a fool, uh, becoming such an easy target like it's that. It's true. Sayaka meant to double-cross you. That's a fact that you can never change. But even till the very end, she wasn't sure of her decision. That's why. If she lay dying, she was thinking of you. She was thinking of me? You can't just say something like that. I mean, there's no way you can know that. Only Sayaka would know for sure, and we can't ask her now. However... Even if you can't ask her, you can infer it, don't you think? Her final thought was how she could protect you. What? So... The fact that she used her last ounce of energy to leave her dying message proves it. If she didn't care what happened to you, she never would have left that message. Well, maybe she just wanted to get back at the person who had killed her. Certainly. That's certainly one possibility, but I don't think that's what it was. Anyway. She was uncertain. She wasn't sure she could kill someone or deceive you. Which is why her plan failed. Her hesitation attracted failure. Right. It's almost ironic when you think about it. Why are you telling me all this? Because you're the kind of person who can overcome this. Because you can move past the deaths of your friends, Sayaka and Leon, and keep moving Correct. forward. Without someone like that, the others would never be able to break free of such a desperate situation. Move past their deaths. That's... I could never do that. No. I'm going to carry them with me for the rest of my life. How could I possibly move past something like that? Leon, Sayaka? I'll carry them with me forever. I'll carry their memories with me wherever I go. So instead of forgetting them, you're choosing the hard road. <laughs> Well, I have high I have high expectations for you. And she said that she revealed the smallest smile. Hey. By the way, I have to admit I'm curious. How did you know I wanted to talk to you about Sayaka? Oh well I'm psychic. What? Huh? Kidding. I just have pretty good intuition. Ha 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 ha. <laughs> Oh, um, yay, we finished chapter one. These just sound like like more adult versions of gotcha stories. What? No, these are way more detailed and thought out than gotcha stories. So it sounds like. <laughs> <laughs>